All right, guys, we are here with Caleb Reddick, and we're going to be talking about some of his strategies, what he's looking at playing for Worlds, and maybe some states results that he's had recently here. So, Caleb, how about you introduce yourself? Hello. Um, as the admission, my name is Caleb. I'm based out of Oklahoma City. Um, I play at a local store here called DZ Comics. Shout out to DZ Comics. They don't do much competitive stuff. It's a lot of local kind of casual, but there's a couple of guys um, – Stephen and Eli mainly, and then David, the store runner, that um, we travel to local stuff like here in Tulsa, um, sometimes Texas, and Dallas, and play down there. Um, I'm part of the Clicksman, uh, Uncanny Clicksman. Most of them are based out of Texas. I'm one of the only ones in Oklahoma. Um, I started playing Hero Clicks back when, like, the very first set came out. Um, Oh, really? It was so you're, a, the, you're an OG uh, as well. Okay. Like, first, my uncle, when I was in, I think I was in middle school, my uncle bought some boxes and he's like, hey, we want to play some Hero Clicks. And I'm like, what is that? And so we brought <laughs> over these, and Fire Lord, the, the old vet Fire Lord that, you know, 13 attack that just got the legacy card. Um, that was like my favorite piece to play back in the day. Um, Dude, anyway, so then I stopped playing. Nasty. Oh, my gosh. He was <laughs> so good. So it was me and my brother. Too, <laughs> right <laughs> yeah they uh they 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 fall really hard uh, but i played with my brother back in the day and it was just us playing at my house and we probably got most of the rules wrong but we had fun um so i played a lot of fire lord and uh old school amazo um yeah this was dude. the very first unique amazo that was one of my favorites um anyways then uh, high school happened and i stopped playing and then college came around i'm like you know i kind of want to get back into hero clicks so i was looking up i um, mean like what's currently there and nick fury just came out the agents of shield with uh, balls of fury um just That's came a, out and i was like a brutal set to come back into dude, the game with. it was so good <laughs> um and then it has resources so like pandora's box and what was the other one rock of eternity yeah. um were pretty big back then so Anyway, there's a place in Tulsa, um, Oklahoma, that runs, um, it's called Dice Addiction, and they that's where our states was, um, and they run a lot of competitive stuff, so I was playing in a tournament there, and um, so that's kind of where my competitive started, was from Dice Addiction there in Tulsa. Excellent, man. Um, yeah, so that's kind of me and me in a nutshell. I love it, man. I didn't, I didn't know that you had started playing so early on, but I'm the same way. My brother brought some Hero Clicks home, and he's like, let's play, and just instantly addicted. Absolutely loved it. And yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. Fire Lord I mean, it's just the superheroes. Favorites. Like, come on, dude! I know, right? It's like even when you didn't know the rules, it's just just looking at them. It's like this is great. So that's cool, yeah. man. And some of the paint jobs were kind of wacky back in the day, oh, but yeah, it's fine. the faces. Whew. <laughs> if you know, you know. It was it was not good. But uh, you as a player, so you said that competitive kind of started with uh, the more low or er, more recent uh, venue with Dice Addiction. So you've been playing mm -hmm. competitive for a while then. You've placed, I yeah, think, last year? Yeah, it's been about, year? I don't know, like six years. Maybe six years, I would say. Six, six years, or seven, sure. possibly. Yeah. And you were a top eight in Worlds last year? Uh, yeah, last year I was top eight. I got knocked out by, um, oh my gosh, um, I believe it was Isaac Denke. Because he's been been like my crutch. Like every time I go to a tournament, he's there, and his dang prime <laughs> Spider Man is just always just eats me alive. He's um, one but I of believe my he's locals, the one that actually. Isaac. Oh, is, is he one of the locals? Yeah. yeah. He was the raid. Yeah, he's a solid player, up, man. He was uh, the person to beat when I was younger. If I ever beat Isaac, and I was you know like ten or eleven, I'd go like tell my mom like, yeah, I beat Isaac this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. Yeah, he is he's he's really really good um anyway so that's so top eight worlds um my biggest achievement was the i believe it's going to be the only online worlds it's you know the unofficial online worlds tournament back in 2020 um i won that playing x-men swap which oh, okay. is still a good team um but i ended up taking first place there yeah. i mean x-men swap too is just like I think a lot of people just view it as a headache to play, so I understand why people it's, don't. It's mentally exhausting trying to remember who to swap, when to swap, and then, you know, if you lose map, okay, now you have to change your swaps and pick different people. That's not for me. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> it is the only time I've played it um, that um, I, I, after that, I was like, it's too exhausting. I would rather just have the team I want on the, you know, the only sw swaps I do now are the, the uh, the new chases that that's a little bit easier to decide on. Definitely. 
So as a competitive player, Caleb, how would you describe your play style? Like what, are you an overly aggressive player? Are you a more defensive shell? Do you look to control the board? What is your general theory just across the meta you've played? So I've done both. Um, I, my, probably my, one of my favorite, not my favorite, one of my favorite teams I've played was that Captain Kirk um, overdrive team that guys in Tulsa kind of initially started. And then I took it and ran with it. Um, it's Alpha Strike, get in your face, drop a tank. Kirk punch you, Sam Cap ID call in. Um, meanwhile, WizKid Prime bumps everyone up. I mean, it's just a really good offensive. Um, I've also been a defensive guy. Um, I went through a phase of um, Demon in Armor with Wonder Woman Prime and the Carter Shield and two Saturnines and um, Saki. And um, basically, it's come and try to hit me. And if you don't, you know, I've got Saki and I've got a Flash there. And of course, Wonder Woman Prime is pretty offensive too. I was a really big fan um, of that team. I saw you playing that in a broadcast event, and I liked how your team, like that one specifically, was like de deceptively defensive because you would just go across the map, double stop sign, and it's like, okay, deal with my demon in armor, deal with my Faust. Yeah, yeah double that. barrier with stop sign. So you really you can't destroy the barrier. You can't run through it. And usually it was on negative zones, so there's not much way around the barrier. And if you get through the barrier, then you have to deal with the high defense, no increased attack, and... Good luck. <laughs> Seriously. I did find out the um, the downside to that, or the weakness is Pulse Wave, because that gets around everything. Yeah. Um, so the new version, I'm, I may be jumping ahead, but the new version of Defensive Shell adds Killmonger to it, so that way the typical Pulse Wave is Saki, and he's got the cloak, and so you always get that rollout no matter what. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that addition. I saw on one iteration, I believe it was the one that you won Texas with, had Cosmo yeah, on yeah, it yeah. as well. Yeah, with Cosmo. Was that and two that was shut down Pulse Wave? wave? Yeah, okay. Yep. So is and Killmonger it so I got... taking his place then? Yes, yeah. Killmonger's on there instead. Because the thing with Cosmo is my leaderships can't take a token off, and he doesn't have, I don't think he has, if he has willpower, it's all dependent on that role. So it sure. only for sure works two turns. And when I was in Texas, there's a guy, Kenny, who plays Deathstroke. And I he beat me the first game. And then in the top, I believe it was top four or top eight, I played him again. And I, I barely scraped out a win. But the Cosmo only shut him down for two turns. And then that next turn, he was able to pulse wave. And, you know, Deathstroke pulse wave is pretty gross. Yeah, it can, it can wreck a team. One shot, just about anything. If you roll right, yeah. though. But tarot helps. You're right. There. Yeah, it's been yeah. done. Yeah, and that's what happened actually, Kenny, in that game. His last roll, the reason I won is because he rolled Pulse Wave, rolled his dice, and I think rolled a, rolled a two and needed to roll a three to kill um, Chip. Ooh. And so he rolled a two and, you know, knocked him, click, knocked him to click three and then knocked him back in the wall to click four, which didn't kill him. And then because of that, I ended up winning. Well, hey, good breaks. It's but a hey, nice dice game. Rolls. It's a yeah, dice game. It's a dice game. game. <laughs> Live and die by the dice. Awesome, man. So. Uh, you've kind of played everything in the meta right now. What are you looking at? What is the team that you're, you know, currently running with? Maybe something you played for states. What are you looking at possibly playing in worlds? What's uh, what's big on your radar at this moment? So biggest right now is switch. Um, the yeah. being able to ruin some. So uh, in states in Oklahoma um, a couple weeks ago, I was playing a Saki double. So my my kind of standard base was double Carnage, and I was like, this is going to be good. Double Carnage, you can't go wrong with it. And I went with a Saki based team um, with um, Chip and Venomag and St. Walker and Carnage Retail. And um, it was really good until I ran into the Necro Sword. And yeah, Lucas Tom Van Holland was playing the Necro on World's Finest. And um, there was another, I can't remember the guy's name that beat me in top eight, but he was playing Necro Sword on Prime Spider Man. And they just kind of wrecked the Carnage Surfers. Like World's Finest, one shot a Carnage Surfer, ended up one shotting both of them. Um, and then same Prime, Prime Spider Man came and one shot the Carnage Surfers, and they just can't really, you know, if you don't got your rollouts with all the knockback yeah. damage and Necro Sword. The, the interesting thing about Necro Sword, if you knock somebody back into a wall and they have a reducer, they can't reduce it. Yeah. Because the Necro Sword says you attack. can't reduce it. Yeah. So that it's caught me brutal. off guard a couple times. I believe that um, so was anyway, a relatively current, recent ruling as well. That that yes, you know, yeah, so it was a recent understandable. Win ruling. Um, so anyway, my current uh, team that I'm that I'm thinking about is World's Finest with um, with Switch uh, again. Lucas's team, credit to him, um, super good team. The other one is the defensive team I was talking about, and it has Killmonger with Demon and Armor, Saki, and the Watcher 
who can, you know, the switches dial around to whatever defense True. Um, you want to go with. Um, and it is, you know, it's both the only vulnerable to pulse wave, but the other downside to Killmonger is people who aren't equipped. So the uh, mad gym being able to equip somebody. So someone doesn't start equipped. So like, let's say sky tyrant starts the game, not equipped. They can just decide not to equip sky Sky tyrant. And then sky tyrant runs across and takes a whack and there's no rollouts. So there are downsides, the defensive shell. Um, But, you know, demon and armor helps mitigate the 14, 15 attack that people can get up to. Um, And yeah, I I I haven't tried it yet. This is one of those I've just built on uh, HC units. Shout out to HC units. Yeah, solid, the best. Solid website, like my favorite. Um, and uh, anyway, so I've just built it on there, and I'm, I'm going to start practicing it um, after this week at work. Sure. Excellent, man. Uh, with that team, uh, what's like the, the perfect situation for it? Is there a specific map you want to go to? Are you looking to go first, second? Are you getting in their face with this defensive shell? Does it function similarly to the one we discussed a little bit ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's exact same. It's got the double barrier option. It's used chip and the legacy Green Lantern, the 20-point Green Lantern one, um, with uh, flash and chip. So it can get across the map. It can do double barrier. Um, it doesn't really map. I mean, map dependent. It's, it's not really because you can get across the map on a normal size map with flash pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so map doesn't really matter. The issue would be like a barrier team. So I can, you know, two constructs can be the two fire hydrants, which can get rid of essentially four squares of barrier. So it depends on if I'm playing someone that has a lot of barrier pieces, then which most competitive teams do now. Yeah. I mean, then I'll go to open map. Like um, the new Wakanda is one of my favorites. It's wide open. Like, there's only four squares of barrier on the entire map printed, and they're, like, on one side. Yeah. It's also, uh, you had mentioned World's Finest earlier. It's one of my favorite maps to take World's Finest to because he is just always in stealth. <laughs> yeah, in stealth, and he doesn't care about stealth. and mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fantastic. He's and so, <laughs> uh, I guess with your team, so we mentioned that, like, barrier is a weakness. Like, the heavy barrier teams might cause some issues. What does this team like answer i know demon and armor helps like reduce and mitigate the higher attack values are there any specific Mm -hmm. figures you're like looking at countering with this build or is it just like a general meta guess like where does uh the building mindset come for this so the the main figures i've been struggling against are the prime spider-man and world's finest um prime spider-man coming in with his charge flurry and then free attack or he can move in and then do free charge flurry like he just has so many different attacks and you can bump him up to a 12 13 and he's doing four clicks of damage with each hit with super strength so mitigating him down so emotional modifiers are a big part of the team picking minus one attack so they're usually coming in with a 10 attack um that can't be increased and then world's finest same thing he starts with an 11 he can be perplexed got close combat experts so it makes a 12 can perplex into a 13 um which the team, this defensive team would make him just be a standard 10 for his attacks. Um, the other issue is the Carnage Surfers, which with RCE and Perplex can be a 12, 13, 14 pretty easily. So all of the current offensive figures, Saki, I mean, another reason Saki comes in, if he doesn't pick Pulse Wave, he comes in with a 9 attack because Ooh. he's printed 10. So yeah. it, it's a very good anti-flurry for, um, for Saki. Um, so it just takes care of a lot of the high attack value, um, lots of lots of its swings with you know flurry and the free flurry and free charge stuff. Um, Definitely, and just then also the really... with the Hulk coming in, yeah, the uh, Hulk Prime comes in with I think he's a on his very top dial he's a twelve with I think he's a twelve so 12 makes him an eleven with CCE so yeah he's with, he's with a thirteen yeah so yeah. it just. Makes him an yes. eleven. It just it helps with a lot of the um, the the big attackers right now. Um, and then it is also semi rune proof because even if they drop a rune, they still can't. Uh, they I still get the killmonger roll. Um, yep. For whatever. So it's and granted the cool thing about the rune is with flash I can just move out of it. So if someone wants to come and rune me, you know, waste all their actions and I just run across the map and drop constructs and chainsaws or whatever, and I can oh, still do true. damage that way. Yeah, I mean. The rune doesn't do anything against team abilities, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it flash just flash still just says, "All right, the whole team." By. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really like that. That's so awesome, it, man. Yeah, okay. the, 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 the being being anti rune is a good one. So the other, the switch and world's finest is a, it's a good team, but 
if you're it's a mirror match and you get ruined first, then you're kind of up the creek without a paddle. This it's team tough. is, well, I just move out of it. doesn't matter. Sure. So the biggest threats are definitely just like pulse wave. And then you're looking to just mitigate the hyper offensive pull up with 14 attack, hit you for five, like just really trying to slow that down and then hopefully control the game after their initial attack. Assuming that. Yeah. If I can withstand attacks, um, because most of the people are not going to be able to kill Saki in one turn, and then he comes in hitting real hard. Um, the other thing that's kind of deceptive is that uh, the Legacy Green Lantern's defensive role, like you can choose to roll a D6 and increase the defense by whatever, half the result. Mm -hmm. So that on top of the defend, you know, you're sitting like a 22-23 defense with a 10 or 11 attack. Like, it's oh it makes it really hard to hit. No kidding, man. All right. So if, if I can withstand a couple attacks from your main hitters, then I just basically I can either outwit them and go hit support or try to one turn your attackers and then just whittle down the support figures. I like it, man. So, yeah, really mobile, really defensive, has answers for a lot of the popular stuff. Uh, the next question, I think that this is, you know, a very hot topic right now. I think this is probably the most like the highest amount of viable primes we've had in a metagame for. Oh, my gosh. It's been a while. So, you know, with primes being as important as they are, uh, why did you choose the prime that you're playing? Is there like a, a specific reason? Does Did it just fit well? Like, you know, there's a lot of options. So, yeah. So to the Mad Gem, um, Mad Gem, I think is arguably, I think is better than Hulk. Some people say Hulk's the best prime. I think I'm a Mad, Mad Gem, Gem right guy. now is the best. Is, like he's my too. favorite. Um, I think him, if you're playing Switch, you have to play World's you have to play uh, Mad Jim because he can give the angler. Um, he also gives the option to sideline the black necro sword. And then if you need it, you just power action to give it to somebody for free. Um, so he is by far my favorite prime right now. Um, if you're playing Hulk, you know, they kind of nerfed him with the dark Phoenix uh, errata, but she still can allow him to do a free move and a free attack if needed. Um, so he's still really good. Um, you're paying 10 points for a 90 point figure. Like, yeah who can say no to that um and he's also he's almost ignorable like you you got to spend so much attacks and outwits to get through him and you only get 10 points for your for all that work so it's really i would say hulk is like very close to second um True. the defensive shell team i the only prime i have is destroyer because i didn't have room for you know i needed all the other um pieces of the puzzle and none of them were the primes um so uh, destroyer sideline if you're not playing a prime i think destroyer is your way to go absorbing man i haven't used him i don't have him he's really good if you can get him out um but i think destroyer is still a, a super would, good option but I would, I would still put destroyer over absorbing man personally i think i do uh, too because he's like know. he'll be more likely to come in on any team any any game you're playing versus absorbing man depends on your free actions and moving the pieces around and what your opponents can do but destroyer your opponents can't stop him yeah, just, he just comes in. It it feels a lot more like instantaneous impact than absorbing man, where it's like, okay, when he's out, you still kind of have to attack him to really get him going. So, as far as the if you yep. don't have a prime on your force argument goes, I think uh, destroyer is definitely the right call, especially with how much equipment is out there, and even with King Killmonger existing, I don't know how much that changes. I think the Mad Jim strategy that you mentioned, where you know you don't start the game equipped with somebody like Sky Tyrant. That's about the extent of like I'm not running equipment is Mad Jim and then a, a handful of figures on your team that yeah, might not you're, start. You're quote not running equipment, but you really have Mad yeah. Jim who's <laughs> going to give free stuff. <laughs> so exactly. I think so. The cool thing about Mad Jim is you get I say it's a free 25 points because you have the Necro Sword at 15, and then if any of your Ring Bears start free equipped, you just swap them. Like Chip is the best one. You swap yeah. them to Modifier. That's a free 10 points. So that's 25 points right there that you didn't pay for. Before. It's incredible. So yeah, okay. Yeah, so Destroyer he's, he's my world. favorite. But, yeah, yeah. Destroyer's on the defensive team, and the world, the anytime switch, you have to play Mad Jim. A hundred percent agreed. Yeah, you can, and then with the figure that we've also just kind of been mentioning in this uh, world's finest too, just swapping the utility belt to something like Waldo Arms, the Darkhold, even Emo Mod. I played in my state's event, and I was doing some Mad Jim stuff with World's Finest, and yeah, there were some games where he stuck with the Waldo arms or other games where it's like, ah, I could use the extra prob because chip took the emo mod, you know, the free mm -hmm, value mm -hmm. you get with Jim is yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Cause who wouldn't want a world's finest that can charge punch you free attack you and then free Waldo arms attack you. Right. I mean, that just sounds oh, yeah. silly. It, it happened a couple times, man. World's finest dealing 15 in a tournament is not, uh, 
It's not like unrealistic. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and the knockback damage. If you want to knock him back after all that, that's a, another three clicks potentially. Oh, yeah. For all you 18 click dial characters out there, we're coming for World's you. World's finest is coming. <laughs> All right, Caleb, uh, do you have any tips for players considering trying your team or similar builds like defensive shells? Do you have any like building tactics for it? What uh, kind of are the linchpins for the style that you're playing in? Mm. So the the defensive team, my my best advice is work on positioning. So the the problem with the new maps is you start on a on the back line, so you have to worry about like moving people up and then moving with flash. So you have to be able to like sidestep with Chip or, um, you know, Saki can move sidestep and then sit in front of of Flash. The bigger maps or the original maps, you have the extended, you know, the regular start zones. And so um, you don't really have to worry about positioning too much. But it's when you move with Flash to, to place people, you have to be able to, to kind of wiggle around Flash out of the center and then Killmonger in the middle. So everyone's around Killmonger. Um, I think the team has seven figs, so it's a little bit easier. Um, once you get eight or nine, then it kind of gets more challenging because not everyone's going to be adjacent to who you need them to be adjacent to. Um, so um, I think six is ideal. Like the team I went to Texas with, Cosmo had six people, so it's really easy to position to be around the the guy with defend and kill. That didn't have Killmonger, but the person with the, the Carter shield. Um, and yeah, so it, it's a lot of positioning and um, and like I said with maps. It works fine on, on really any of the maps, but the the tricky ones are the new ones with the the flat start zone. Sure, yeah. So definitely, and then, you know, working out your turn ones and twos. For... Yeah, turn one and two. Where are you going to go? Um, I think the best strategy with this with this team is you can just run up in their face. Like you don't have to sit back because even if they have pulse wave, you still have the fifty fifty rollout. If you want to risk it, you can sit back and then you can. You know, Saki can go next turn with the hypersonic and reach the full map, and then Flash comes in and carries everyone else. So it's got the big reach, it's got a big swing. Um, I like personally, I like to be offensive with it and get across the map and just throw some barrier down. And you know, good luck dealing with that. <laughs> yeah. um, that scene it worked really well in Texas. So, um, so right now, I haven't. I guess I haven't technically started practicing for Worlds because I still have Texas states coming up July twenty second. Um, oh, by the way, later. July twenty okay. second. Yeah. Uh, Worlds in um, it's I think it's Space Cadets. It's some in, in uh, Texas and the Dallas Fort Worth area. Sure. All right. So that's my that's my uh, my best advice is practice positioning um, and don't be afraid to be aggressive with the team. Sure. Yeah, I think that is a, a good general rule, especially if you're looking at defensive teams, folks. Positioning is everything. You make one mistake on the defensive shells, it's a lot more punishing than with your more offensive teams. I think. Yep. Just in general. Yeah, because if they, the other issue is knockback. Like, because everyone, I mean, you know, you got boots, you've got my, all, probably my favorite knockback character is Frogman. And he comes oh, in and he so knocks good. someone away from Killmonger. Oh, man, he's so good. You know, if you knock someone away from Killmonger, knock someone away from your, your Carter shield, and then they can just really, the, the amount of, the chances of them hitting this figure is just so much easier. So, you know, knock, being able to kind of position so you don't get someone able to knock back or being able to, um, if they eliminate one figure, like most people go for flash, that seems to be a pretty good flash and chip are pretty common. Um, first couple targets. If you can survive without flash or without chip. Um, and I think Saki, I think Saki can do a lot by himself without flash. You know, you know, it's just your leadership's a big thing. Um, so legacy green lantern. Another good thing is he had leadership. So I have two leaderships on the team versus just one with flash. So I think the team is all around better than the Texas team. Um, I think just because the Killmonger, and then Killmonger, you know, you can swap out to Inquisitor, or I'm gonna, fingers crossed, get a black, uh, get a Dark Phoenix before um, I use this team. Um, you know, just got the options to swap out to, um, and then what's his uh, the Doom Supreme's got Pulse by Force Blast, like that's just a oh, side so, lining. so good. Like when it's good, it's great. It's just amazing. Yeah, and that's how I Killmonger feel about a lot of the so. Avengers sixty chases to segue a bit. A lot of them in the in the perfect situation, they are fantastic. Overall, as general figures, you look at them and you kind of go, "Hmm, you know, like they're good, but I don't know. It's they're just all so situationally amazing." So I love. Yeah, the it's design. like the do. It's like the old school Doom, uh, the uh, FFFF chases that came in that 
you've got all these options on the sideline that, well, which one do I need? Um, it's kind of like, you know, I went through a, a Black Widow shifting focus phase. It's like that. Which one do I need for this turn? And, sure. You know, I just swap to that one. Well, these new chases are, which one do I need? I'll just swap to that one. Absolutely. Well, Caleb, do you have any final thoughts or changes you're considering for the build? I know that you said you still haven't tested this one, so I'm sure you still have to go through that a little bit. But uh, it sounds like you've made some changes already, but is there anything else uh, we haven't discussed that maybe is on the table for the build? Oh, tarot cards. You got well, oh. I don't I mean I don't have to really go through my, all my tarot cards I'm using, but I think the uh, the big tarot cards that we have now are I think the star is probably the best tarot card right now. Yeah, it is shot um, through the roof in popularity. Oh my gosh. Every it used team to be I've all played, high I priestess and now it's just all all the star it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, your ones or sixes, and that just and that helps on. It, granted, it can really screw you too, but it helps with your team a lot. Well, you get um, to take the, advantage the, of it first. I think that's the big thing, right? Like you flip yes, it, yeah, and then you, you get it, to go in. You get to go for your offense, and then you can use it defensively too. Um, the other one, let's see, it's the I believe it's the Ace of Cups. The one that is defensive is no, that senses the one that gives you. God, where's my tarot cards? They just went away. Oh, here they are. Um, the one that gives you the plus one defense on defend. Is that the sword? Nope. No, it's not on this one. Um, it's the defend plus one is probably the best one for a defensive team because that sure. just gives you yet another plus one defense to the, <laughs> to the, for the already turn. So, plus one defense. Yeah, so demon gives you plus one. Defend card gives you plus one. So you're sitting at like a 22. <sighs> yeah, it's, oh. yeah. So tarot cards make a huge difference on, I think, you know, some people hate tarot cards. Some people don't even use tarot cards. But unfortunately, because they're free and they don't take sideline, they're kind of required for competitive yeah. teams. I think, uh, you know, if you're planning on going to the world stage and you're somebody like me, I am not a huge fan of tarot cards. They just don't feel like a hero click element. I'm sorry, guys. If anybody <laughs> wants to hate on me in the comments, feel free to. I don't play them myself, but uh, I definitely understand the impact they have. And if I was playing in Worlds, I would absolutely play them myself. But yeah. yeah. Well, and they're the one thing. Like, you can win a game. I've won games because of tarot cards. I've also lost games because of tarot cards. Everyone, that's everyone's story. That's just yeah. how it is. They just that is true, they help man. the game. And... All right. Well, uh, any final thoughts, anything you want to shout out before we conclude this, Caleb? And thanks again for doing this. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, no, I guess final thoughts. Good luck in states. Um, I know we've got probably, I guess it goes all the way through July, so another four weeks of states coming up i'm excited to see people's builds and um practice if you're gonna you know practice positioning practice on different maps and be ready for switch and rune and world's finest and all black necro sword yeah all great advice and yep south dakota states is coming up july 8th you said texas was july 22nd july 22nd yeah all right so we've got some events to look forward to guys we'll be posting all about them and thank you for watching caleb thanks again for doing this all right, thanks for having me in.